A very good evening to you all. Welcome to the English News Bulletin here on Rwanda Television. We're glad you could join us. We'll begin our edition with the headlines. The, interna the International Organization of Black Francophonie has asked that Africa be given two permanent seats on the UN Security Council. The Prime Energy has launched 9.5 billion Rwandan francs in green bonds to fund environmental protection initiatives. My name is Olive Neten. It's always a pleasure to have your company. Now we will kick off, kick off this edition with this uh, news. The International Organization of La Francophonie has asked that Africa be given two permanent seats on the UN Security Council, and this was one of the resolutions reached at the second day, the 19th edition of the Summit of La Francophonie that ended on Saturday in Paris, France. Concerning peace in the Great Lakes region, President Emmanuel Macron stressed that his country supports dialogue and elimination of hate speech, as well as the discerning of the FDLR terrorist group so that security and calm can return to the Eastern DRC. The OEF also asked for efforts to bring back peace to other troubled regions of the world like the Middle East as well as the halting of the war in Ukraine. The Secretary General of the Organization of the La Francophonie, Louise Mushtiwabo, noted that the youth in the bloc are going to be given the opportunity to play a greater role in the development of the member states and also observed that more countries want to join the international organization of La Francophonie with members having increased from the original 88 to the current figure of 93. The latest addition are Ghana and Angola with the former a full member and later an observer. The next summit of La Francophonie will be held in Cambodia in 2026. Moving ahead on Saturday afternoon at Petit Palais in Paris, President Paul Kagame and First Lady Jeannette Kagame attended the second day of the summit of La Francophonie where they joined other leaders for a lunch hosted by international organization of La Francophonie, Secretary General Louise Mushtiwabo, President Kagame also attended the heads of state and government closed session on the theme of renewed multilateralism and on the sidelines of La the summit of La Francophonie, President Kagame met with President Emmanuel Macron of France for a discussion on issues of mutual interest, including the productive bilateral cooperation in key sectors. The heads of state also exchanged on the need to address the root causes of insecurity in the region through concrete actions and support for regional processes. On the sidelines of the summit, President Kagame also met with Dr. Tedros Adron Grebevius, Director General of the World Health Organization, and they discussed the ongoing successful collaboration in the tracking and containment of the Marburg virus in Rwanda, as well as ways to enhance disease control and prevention. Still speaking of this summit, as part of the just concluded summit of La Francophonie, an expo was also organized and featured a stand comprised of Rwandan exhibitions. They explained to us what is they, they were then to showcase. Here at uh, the village of Francophonie, we are exposing on um, three main uh, things. We're exposing on Point d'Air, which has a flight that's a direct flight between Kigali and Paris. Um, and we find that a lot of people are coming to the stand are really pleased to know that uh, there's not only a direct flight between the two cities, but that there's also that facility of entering the country without needing a visa. Um, through RDB projects, um, they're also very excited to hear about the ease of starting a business in Rwanda. Um, and they've also got an opportunity to know about other touristic um, opportunities that exist beyond the gorillas, um, which seem to be um, kind of the main attraction um, in tourism in Rwanda. Uh, we are also here with Imbuto Foundation. Um, which is an organization that has a lot of uh, common themes with the francophonie, uh, especially around education of girls and uh, innovation projects around agriculture and um, um, adolescent sexual reproductive health as well as mental health. Visitors have been many and have been happy. 
Um, they uh, predominantly are showing up to um, get a taste of our coffee, but also staying to learn about um, the programs that we're exposing here at the Rwanda stand at Francophonie. We've had a great time here and we've had um, a good time getting to know many people from many different countries that are exposing here as well as the local community here. Moving ahead to more news, in 2020, Rwanda introduced the national policy of electric mobility in a move to further emphasize the importance of e-mobility in the country's transport sector. However, the question remains, are our mechanics skilled, equipped and ready to repair these electric vehicles? Let's hear more from William Evans. Electromobility, also referred to as e-mobile, began gaining significant attention in Rwanda around the year 2008. It is simply the use of electric vehicles and other forms of electric transportation alongside the supporting infrastructure. These electric cars could be fully electric or plug-in hybrid vehicles that run on electric power and can be charged from the grid. The demand for these cars has kept increasing over time and this is why, according to those in this business, in terms of numbers, EVs, of course, when the exemption first started, were very small in numbers. Now we see an influx of about, uh, let's say, 10 to 15 units a month of pure electric vehicles. Um, for hybrids, at the moment, we're seeing around 30 to 40 vehicles being uh, imported a month. Um, and in terms of sales, we do have an increase of uh, pure electric and also hybrid as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, a, a continuous growth as time goes on because people are seeing that their friends are having it or their family members or their colleagues and telling their other, you know, by word of mouth that, oh, this is really fuel efficient, this is uh, reliable, it's durable for our market and our region, knowing that we're a small country, our distance is short, this type of vehicle and technology can work in this country. In terms of maintenance, Usually, electric vehicle dealers offer electric chargers for every single electric car purchased and nothing in terms of mechanics. Here are some of the common issues these cars suffer. A kenshi wazo dukuna guhura nabzio zikuna kujira ama mesaje aza kuri tablo. Quite often, they display fault messaging on their dashboards concerning hybrid systems and sometimes they drop their power or instead of using both the motor and the batteries, it uses only one or two. The managing director of Garage Atekao acknowledges a skill gap in electric car mechanics in Rwanda and is spearheading initiatives to address this issue. When you look around, we still have a deep skill gap in electric car mechanics. People purchase these nice electric cars, but they fail because we do not have good electric vehicle mechanics who know well how to handle them. That is our biggest challenge as of now. That is why I have invested in skilling, especially youths in electric vehicle mechanics to address this problem. Our plan is to admit and skill the best five students from all integrated polytechnic regional colleges, IPRCs, and this will be trained in a period of one year about hybrid and electric car mechanics and maintenance by a German trainer. CEO Rwanda Electric Motors says that a few people have been trained this far with basic skills to handle mechanical issues of electric vehicles and there is still a long way to go. He encourages people to buy hybrid and electric cars that are brand new and for second-hand vehicles they should buy cars that are less than five years old. For sure it's not, uh, enc it's not encouraged to bring in uh, an EV or a hybrid that exceeds 10 years because we always uh, encourage people to buy at least five and less, year, less than five years uh, because we, the, those vehicles might be having issues and uh, our technicians are not at the good level of uh, troubleshooting the vehicles that have, uh, you know, are aged. So we are encouraging people to resort to buy new vehicles or second hand but not more than five years. E-mobility is rapidly evolving with many governments and organizations investing in electric transportation solutions as part of broader sustainability and climate change initiatives. Rwanda aims to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions by 38% by the year 2030. William Evans, Mutabazi, RTV News.
Moving ahead to economic matters, Prime Energy has launched 9.5 billion Rwandan francs in green bonds to fund environmental protection initiatives. The Rwanda Stock Exchange views this as a positive milestone for the growing market, marking the first time such securities will be traded in Rwanda. We have more. Sandy Rosera, the Chief Executive Officer of Prime Energy, emphasized that the bonds they have issued will enhance the company's investment capacity and contribute to Rwanda's economic growth through environmentally friendly projects. The green bond we're offering is, is not a, if just a financial instrument. I think we talked in detail about the characteristics and what's happening in development in, the, in, in our market. But it also represents our commitment in several areas. First, transparency transparency for us in our operations and reporting. Second, the envi environmental stewardship. I think we've nailed down on the word green. The third, of course, which is very important, is a strong return for investors. And again, last but not least, is the co contributing to our economy's uh, growth and development. To attract potential investors, the company organized a tour of its Mukunga Second hydropower project in Musanze District in the northern province. Siyongo Kisoso, the managing director at PK Capital, which serves as the company's advisor in this bond issuance, assured investors of the financial security and reliability of investing in these bonds. In terms of risk mitigation, I think you know investors look at return, but they also look at risk. So to be able to cover all investor concerns, we've ensured that the contracts for this particular company are assignable to investors in the event of a default. There are financial covenants that ensure the company throughout the life manages it quite prudently. And the bond is listed, and a listed bond has a number of uh, uh, features that are attractive for investors. One, the withholding tax on interest is at 5%. Uh, which is lower than other interest-bearing instruments, which come in at 15%. This bond can be used as collateral uh, at banks for anyone who wishes to borrow against it. Uh, if you wish to sell the bond before the seven years, uh, given it's a listed bond, you can uh, transact on the secondary market through uh, an authorized broker. Uh, the bond has gone through the rigor of uh, assessment by the Capital Markets Authority, which really is which really designs rules and regulations to protect investors. Gwabukumba Celestin, Chief Executive Officer of the Rwanda Stock Exchange Limited, highlighted that Prime Energy's move to issue green bonds is a unique approach in the Rwandan market. He believes this will inspire other companies to feel more confident in pursuing similar ventures. Kuba ishowe kuza kisoko ikaba itang ichise ma promesha mwenda ariko zikurichile bya nyita green bonds. Nokuva ngo ma promesha the presence on the stock exchange and the issuance of securities that meet all the necessary criteria for environmental protection specifically green bonds represents a significant advancement in green sustainable finance. Uh, sustainable finance, economy durable, mu difference ni kwa vuga byo, ni kintu gikomeye cyane. Tapelo Tsole, chief executive officer of the Capital Market Authority, affirmed that Rwanda's stock market is marking steady progress, though there remains considerable potential for further growth. Capital markets are the cornerstone of every economy. It's the heartbeat of the economy. That is where private sector is capital. That is where a lot of infrastructure development come to the market to raise capital. And also developmental project comes to raise capital. So it is part and parcel of the, uh, the, the ecosystem of development of any economy. Prime Energy is seeking a loan of 9.5 billion random francs to finance environmental protection initiatives, specifically for the construction of a new power plant on the Rukarara River. Investors interested in purchasing these green bonds must commit a minimum investment of over 100 million random francs. The loan will be repaid biannually with an interest rate of 13.75% in random francs and 9.5% in US dollars. Still on the economic sector, those operating in the Bujisera District Special Economic Zone have presented to the Minister of Trade and Industry the challenge of inadequate electricity they have been facing. This is as the Minister visited them on Friday. Prudence Sebahizi assured the businessmen and women that as long as the term solution is being looked for, they will solve this problem. 
we have more. Investors in the Special Economic Zone of Ujisera District expressed that the Rwandan government's supportive investment policies played a crucial role in their decision to establish operations in this economic zone. This was reiterated during a visit by the Minister of Trade and Industry on Friday. However, they also raised concerns about electricity supply issues that are negatively affecting their operations. We was encouraged to, uh, to start our investment in Rwanda. Uh, why? Because many things in this country, in this beautiful country, this is, uh, uh, from my understanding, it's the best country uh, here in AIC. Uh, uh, you have uh, uh, an honest uh, president who wants to uh, develop this country and make it the best one. Uh, not only in uh, EIC, maybe also in Africa. Uh, 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 we start with uh, uh, um, uh, many facilities on uh, uh, on starting up the uh, uh, manufacturing here. Uh, we get all the support. The environment is very good. Uh, people are very friendly. The investment uh, environment is good. We request ask uh, the government help us to stop to export waste paper. At the same time, challenge is waste paper because Uganda and I, Uganda and uh, Kenya. The Minister of Trade and Industry, Seba Izi Prudence, highlighted the ministry's recognition of the vital role of the industrial sector in the country's development. He noted that in partnership with other sectors, the ministry is dedicated to seeking sustainable solutions to the challenges that impede industrial growth. Uh, the most interesting factories which um, are very impressive uh, include the waste management uh, factories. Uh, we've seen um, those factories that process all type of waste from plastic waste, uh, aluminium waste, uh, paper waste and they produce them, um, uh, they produce uh, finished products that can be sold to the market but also at the same time protecting our environment. Uh, we have also seen uh, refineries, um, the best uh, uh, tantalum refinery in Africa is here established. Um, it's a very encouraging uh, investment here in Rwanda uh, that adds value to our minerals. Uh, there are many other plants here uh, which I think are very uh, promising that Rwanda uh, is uh, industrializing. Um, the common challenge that we have been um, presented uh, by different factories here um, is the consistency of electricity. Uh, which we think we are going to work on urgently with the uh, Rwanda Energy Group. Um, and we also see a common problem of uh, waste treatment, especially a water treatment plant for the entire special economic zone. Uh, we have to make sure that this uh, is addressed urgently. We will discuss with uh, the managing company uh, here to deal with it. The Wijesera Special Economic Zone currently hosts 12 operational factories that export their products to both domestic and international markets, with an additional eight factories under construction. The Minister of Trade and Industry has been touring industrial sites across the country, as well as engaging with various business activities. To the education sector, students studying technology have begun developing robots designed to address challenges in various sectors, including healthcare and agriculture. These innovative robots aim to assist people with disabilities and enhance irrigation practices, contributing to improved food security in Rwanda. Inora Gladys with more. Kaze Etiamegin is one of the students in Maranyunda Girls School in Wujesera District. She explains how they have developed a technological device that will be used in irrigation in order to contribute to food security in both rainy and sunshine season. We thought of bringing it in the sunshine season whereby we'll, uh, it has a soil moisture sensor. It will sense the moisture of the soil. If it finds that the moisture of the soil is below the needed one, it will directly pump water as we saw. 
and if it finds that uh, the water level is enough, it will directly stop. So uh, that is in the sunny season. While in the rainy season, we, we thought of bringing um, draining draining swamps whereby it will absorb the exceeding water then it will store it for future use in the sunshine season it will help very much because it will reduce uh, hunger whereby the food will the food yield will increase some other students who make technological devices such as robotic arms explain that their purpose is to solve the problems of Rwandan community including those faced by people with disabilities and that it helps them to combine their studies with real life which will also lead them to build other careers. The project we're working on helps people with disability to not feel left out and be able to do the activities that normal people do and uh, also it will help independence for example they will not need uh, caregivers to help them in their daily activities they will be able to do the things on their own the things that we do in makerspace are a bit different from what to study in class so um, for example i study mpc and uh, it helps me a lot to know more about computer science and also uh, for example I may not choose to continue with what I study now in the future so what I do in Mercury Space will be able to help me to continue with helping the society and uh, you know making people feel like they're part of the society and uh, feeling like I have uh, a role that they play in the society. Gabriela Ndekezi, who assists these students in getting this knowledge, says that they aim to give these students an opportunity of second option of career when they complete their high school studies or while even solving problems of the community. One of the differences I've realized between Africa and uh, other countries abroad is that they start at a young age. That is why we decided to start investing in projects at a young age where students start getting the support from our own organization in terms of technical support, but also funding for the project. So you can imagine someone who's starting from the level of high school that's already getting support at that young age. By the time they now get into university or even graduate, it's much easier because they already have operating projects that are already running. And one of the things we usually tell these young people is that by the time you graduate, instead of now going to look for a career, you already have a project that can now employ other fellow students. On this specific project of irrigation, it's a project they've been working on for almost a year now. We've had time to work with them during the holidays where they've started working on a prototype. I think you had the opportunity to look at some of the prototype they're working on. And uh, we thank the school because they're now giving them a platform to start implementing the prototype. So what our own organization is doing is to start connecting them with companies or even mentors that are already working on this project. So one of the things they did is they looked at in the area of Bujesera, what is one of the problems that the community is facing. That is why they decided to work on the irrigation project. So they'll be more like implementing it in the school and they're thinking of now planning to scale this project where they'll now go to other several areas of the country but the first prototype will now be done in the school to look at the impact how is it helping what are some of the challenges and what can they improve as students in order to increase the knowledgeable youth and give them the opportunity to find jobs in the future one million people will be taught coding and another five hundred thousand will be trained about artificial intelligence enora gladys are achieving news Thank you for tuning in for today's broadcast on behalf of the technical news production team. We wish you a restful weekend.